So while everybody was talking about the Israel-Hamas war, the IMF and the World Bank held a meeting that talked about the real state of the global economy. Check this out. What we're seeing is an economy that's been quite resilient given the shocks it has experienced in the last year, year and a half, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the energy crisis, and then the tightening of monetary policy around the world. Despite all of this, we're still seeing growth that is close to 3% for the global economy this year. And we're expecting about 2.9%, not very far from 3, uh, next year. Now, what we're saying also is, you know, 3% is, you know, it's not a global recession, far from it. Mm -hmm. But it's also not the kind of growth that we're used to when we look at the pre-pandemic period, which was, you know, more around 3.6, 3.8%. So we characterize this by saying, well, yes, the global economy is resilient, but it's kind of limping along. It's not sprinting right now. Limping along. Did you guys hear that? The global economy is limping along. No wonder a lot of my friends keep telling me how they're already in a depression, that we've been in one for a while. And the recession that they kept denying, that was last year when gas prices were sky high. And now things feel worse and it's not hard to see unless you're totally blind. You know what I mean? So yeah, is a recession coming? What exactly is next for the economy? The IMF World Bank meeting had some pretty good insights into the matter. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today in this video, but first, why should you care about a recession in the first place? Of course, we all know how recessions can mean negative growth for the economy, which in turn leads to company bankruptcies and people losing their jobs. But apart from that, there's also cause for concern when it comes to investing and our long-term financial freedom fundamentals. The U.S. economic outlook has improved in recent months, but some economists still see a difficult road ahead. The Fed's policymaking Federal Open Market Committee projected full year 2023 GDP growth of just 1% back in June. That's basically suggesting economic growth could soon slow to a crawl. But at its September meeting, the panel boosted its projection for 2023 to 2.1%. At the same time, the Fed has acknowledged the banking crisis in early 2023 tightened credit conditions, potentially making it even more difficult for companies to secure loans. Now, if companies can't borrow money, then they can't grow. Worst case scenario, they can no longer operate and then they go under. And the Fed may not be done yet. Sure, they've gotten inflation down from its peak last year, but let's not forget the fact that it's still well above the Fed's 2% long-term goal. The central bank has so far raised interest rates four times in 2023, bringing the target federal funds rate up from 5.25% to 5.5%. Interest rates are now at their highest level in 22 years, right about the time of the dot-com bubble and high interest rates weigh on both corporate earnings and economic growth. But if they still don't see a satisfying impact on inflation, the Fed could easily bring those interest rates even higher. And that's something to be worried about as it impacts the companies and their stock prices as rising interest rates reduce the amount of disposable income that Americans have to spend in the economy. Just look, S&P 500 companies are on the track to eke out just a 0.4% year-over-year increase in earnings during the third quarter, following a 4.1% earnings decline for the second quarter, the largest in any quarter since the COVID-19 shutdowns in 2020. And this is before the potential delayed impact Fed rate hikes will have on the U.S. economy, something to keep an eye on for investors. Because remember guys, the time lag for monetary policies can definitely take a while. It takes around 18 months for the full effect of rate hikes to make their way into the economy. And that's where we are. The Fed likes to talk about aiming for a soft landing, but in reality, history shows a soft landing for the economy is very challenging to pull off. Since the 1950s, each period of US disinflation driven by Fed policy tightening has coincided with a US recession. So is the Fed going to make history? Highly unlikely. Plus, here's one warning sign of a US recession that's been flashing for investors since mid-2022. The yield on the two-year treasury note is above the yield on the 10-year treasury note. Financial experts call it a yield curve inversion. Historically, two-thirds of the time the yield curve has inverted, the US economy has fallen into a downturn within 18 months. The last time that the yield curve inverted was in late 2019, just a few months prior to the COVID-19 U.S. recession. And yeah, the yield curve is now well off of its lows from early July, but it's still deeply in negative territory. I mean, we can see where it's going. Can't stop it. Just prepare and protect yourself. Part of that is joining our financial freedom here right here on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button and tap that notification bell. Absolutely free. And if you want to show this video some love, light up the like button. Really appreciate that. Thank you, guys. We definitely need to stick together because you know what they always say. 
When all else fails, they take you to war. So yeah, while most mainstream media channels are talking about this Israel-Hamas war, the IMF World Bank held a series of meetings in Morocco talking about where we really are as a global economy. And more importantly, there are real prospects for a world economy weighed down by debt, inflation, and conflict. So here are our main takeaways. First, there's the limping economy comment. The new IMF outlook signed off before the escalation of the conflict between Israel and Hamas sees global economic growth slowing from 3.5% last year to 3% this year and 2.9% next year to a 0.1%, which is a 0.1% downgrade from a previous 2024 estimate. Global inflation is seen dropping from 6.9% this year to a still high 5.8% next year. Central bankers have hinted that they're open to putting a pause on interest rate hikes if things go well. They're crossing their fingers and hoping that they can finally get inflation under control without causing too much of an economic slowdown. Most agreed it was too early to say how the conflict in the Middle East would affect a global economy, which they described as limping along, not sprinting. Another economic concern in their meetings, the major debt squeeze. Basically, the heavy debt burdens of advanced economies from the United States to China and Italy. This was something that kept coming up in their meetings. They also mentioned how investors are becoming more nervous about holding longer term debt and that the great moderation is over. Talking about the two decade era of relative economic calm before the 2008-2009 financial crisis. They're also worried about how climate change policies were failing to deliver net zero emissions and that scaling them up would explode public debt. High interest rates would put some borrowers in more precarious positions. Around 5% of banks globally are vulnerable to stress if those rates remain higher for longer, and a further 30% of banks, including some of the world's largest, would be vulnerable if the global economy enters a prolonged period of low growth and high inflation. And here's something that especially rang some alarm bells when I read it. Revamping the IMF and World Bank to better reflect the emergence of economies like China and Brazil. It definitely sounds like they're taking power from the US on the global stage. If the US does slip into a recession sometime during what's left of 2023 or early into 2024, there's no reason for investors to panic. First off, historically speaking, recessions don't last very long. The average duration of a US recession since World War II is just 11.1 months. The COVID-19 recession in early 2020 lasted just two months. Recessions are fairly common. Since World War II, there's been about one US recession every five years or so. Recessions can lead to job losses and other financial difficulties for Americans, but if you've been following our financial freedom fundamentals on this channel, then recessions could hold some excellent buying opportunities for long-term investors. Timing a market bottom is something that's nearly impossible, but the S&P 500 has generated a 40% average return in the 12 months following its low point of a US recession. Some stocks even have a track record of performing relatively well during recessions. For example, Target, Walmart, and Home Depot shares significantly outperform the S&P 500 during both the 2020 and 2008 recessions. Listen, you don't need to build a bunker, buy a bunch of gold, or stock up on toilet paper to survive a dip in the economy. Let's talk about some of the steps that you can take to prepare for a recession. First of all, don't panic. It's completely normal to worry about your finances when a recession's looming, but don't let fear drive your decisions. Panicking usually ends up leading to bad choices. Instead, focus on what you can control. You're the boss of your money, so make smart decisions even in challenging times. And remember, you can weather a recession. Second, let's talk about budgeting. Now this one's a game changer because if you don't have a plan for your money now, a recession will make those decisions for you and that's not ideal. Start by listing your income sources and subtracting your monthly expenses. It's easy with budgeting apps like Every Dollar. Make sure you can cover your essentials like food, rent, utilities, and gas. If not, look for expenses that you can trim. And if you've been leaning on credit cards to make ends meet, it's time to break that habit. Learning to live within your means and staying debt-free is a game changer in times of crisis, whether it's a recession, job loss, or some other emergency. And speaking of emergencies, step number three, build up that emergency fund. This will give you the peace of mind when everybody else is in panic mode. And that's not just true during a recession. It's always a good idea. If you don't have an emergency fund, start by saving at least $1,000 as quickly as you can. If you're debt free, keep saving until you have three to six months worth of expenses. That way you have the confidence to navigate a recession and make the best choices for you and for your family. It'll also help with the next step, hands off your investments. 
When the stock market takes a dip, the urge to sell your investments and stash your cash into something safer can be strong. But hold on, don't let fear drive you to costly mistakes. Remember, investing is a roller coaster ride, and the only ones who get hurt are the ones who bail early. So stay put, stocks go up, stocks go down. But you only realize those losses if you pull your money out when stocks are down. Investing is a long-term game, and the market will bounce back. When the market's down, long-term investors see it as a sale on their favorite stocks. I mean, if you're in a stable job, debt-free, and you have your emergency fund set, you can definitely consider investing more during a recession as you'll get more bang for your buck. And when the market rebounds, as it always does, you'll be grateful that you didn't jump off the roller coaster with everyone else. Remember, investing is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Don't pull your money out just because some talking head on TV says so. And if you're unsure about investing, consult with your trusted expert to guide you. And remember, guys, this is not investment advice at all. In fact, this is just my own personal perspective after 20 years of investing in the stock market myself. You should always consult with a trusted financial advisor to guide you through your own financial decisions. I'm not a financial advisor. But one last thing, take your time to reevaluate your job situation. Your job plays a big role in surviving a recession and losing your income when times are tough is definitely something to be concerned about. So take this time to position yourself for a recession. Are you secure in your current job or should you explore more stable options? If you're out of work or foresee a layoff, pause extra debt payments, focus on essentials and save money, stack that cash. Then start hunting for a job that offers security. Maybe you need to update your resume, polish your interview skills, consider a recession-resistant career, maybe even starting a YouTube business. A side hustle can also help you to earn extra cash while you're looking for stability. One of the best ways to gain some financial stability is to build an income that you can earn while working from home. If you would like to learn more about that, definitely check out the links in the description down below this video. And remember, even if you're not anxious about job loss, don't turn to debt. It may seem like a quick fix, but it'll only make things worse in the long run. Debt is a bad move, even when times are tough, even during recession. So there you go, guys, some financial freedom fundamentals for you in recession times. Let me know if you have some financial advice of your own. I definitely love to get a discussion going. More on the next one, and I'll see you guys there.